Typically, floor plan diagram represents a diagram of the room or a building viewed from above. There are many benefits of floor plan diagrams. They help design and build homes. They also help design furniture layout, wiring systems, and a lot of other things, and with the right design, increase happiness and consumptions of the living space. Quality floor plan diagram also makes living space more desirable. A lot of times, it is also used as communication tools to do remodeling and additions to the living space. And last but not least, it is an extremely valuable tool for real estate agents and leasing companies to help sell or rent out living space because it provides communications to buyers and sellers as well as the measurements of the living space. There are multiple floor plan diagram templates available in Microsoft Visio. If you type floor plan into the search bar, you see office layout, home plan, floor plan, and a lot of other diagram types. The good thing about selecting office layout or home plan layout templates is that it allows you not just to design floor plan, but also add a furniture onto your floor plan diagram. For example, in office layout template, you will end up with multiple stencils. You will see walls, doors, and windows stencil, as well as stencils for office furniture and office equipment. The easiest way to start building floor plan diagram is to just drag the shape right onto the diagram. Visio provides room shapes where you can drag the entire room into the diagram. Visio displays dimensions of the room so you can adjust the size based on your need and size of the room on the diagram changes as well. You can also add doors and adjust the door sizes as well as door location as well as windows onto your diagram. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career I worked as a consultant helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in a community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. Each object on the diagram allows you to access additional properties for this particular object. For example, there are four objects in this particular diagram. There is a room object, which if you do a right mouse click, allows you to access properties for this room. This is useful because if you're trying to set specific dimensions for the room, you have ability to set widths and lengths for the room right here in this dialog box. Different objects on the floor plan diagrams possess different features. For example, if we do a right mouse click on the door, we can reverse door in and out openings. We can change display options of what we're showing on the diagram, and we can add additional options for doors, walls, windows, and spaces. And if we're not happy with our selection or change, we can always do Ctrl-Z or use the Undo button. Windows on the diagram have very similar set of properties as the doors. You can reverse in and out opening, and you can reverse left and right openings, as well as to set display options. You can also give title by double-clicking on a particular object and typing the title of the area or the name of the particular object. So what are some important considerations when you're working on the floor plan? One of the very important questions you might ask yourself before starting to work on the floor plan is, what is this floor plan for and who is the target audience? Some of the typical uses of the floor plans might be architectural floor plan, where you just show the dimensions of the area and how area is going to be used. You might also use floor plan to show home layout or office layout. If you're trying to depict an existing floor plan, you might want to consider get the sizes of the objects and capture their proportions. It is very easy to add additional objects onto the diagram as you're progressing with your design. You just need to drag an additional object and snap it into existing object. You might also consider expanding your floor plan differently. To do that, we will delete the room that we just dragged into the diagram and I'm going to use it by clicking the delete button on the keyboard. Instead of building space room by room, we will use this room shape from Microsoft Visio to define external dimensions of our structure. You can start defining the walls by using the wall shape. To do that, 
you just need to drag the wall shape and snap it into the position. Once you have wall shape selected in Visio, you can drag it by using the circle in the corner and it will snap it into position and will help define the areas. As you can see, if you drag it slowly, Visio shows grid line and this green grid line, this is a horizontal location and positioning for the wall. There are multiple ways to define openings in between the rooms. You can define openings like what I have right now by shortening the wall in between two living areas. Or if you have the entire wall defined, you can also add the opening right in the middle of the wall. After opening is in place, you can adjust the sizes for the opening. Because now our room has two purposes. We cannot define the name of the room by just giving the title to the room. We would have to give title to each individual area. You use it by using text tool in Microsoft Visio. You select the text tool and start typing. For example, you can call the living space on the left as living area. And if you're happy with the title, you can just drag it and position in the right location in the living area. You can copy and paste the title and give the name to another area. Or you can define the new title using the text tool. There are certain items you might consider including into your floor plan diagram based on what you're trying to communicate. In addition to defining external dimensions for the area, you might want to consider include internal walls and hallways. You might consider showing restrooms, windows and doors. In addition to defining dimensions, you might also consider showing appliances, for example, stove, refrigerator and other appliances, as well as fireplaces, saunas, pools and other objects. And what is also very useful on the floor plan diagram is showing the purposes of the rooms, as well as their dimensions. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this, and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. As you add more and more items onto your diagram, you show more and more things. As you go beyond originally defined paper size in Microsoft Visio, you can expand the paper size by navigating to the Design tab and clicking Auto Size. This adds additional page onto the diagram and you can continue expanding it. As you keep adding walls, Microsoft Visio automatically snaps the wall blocks into the existing rooms. You can do this exercise as a designer by yourself or you can suggest to the client to join you when you're doing this work on your computer. This way you can get feedback from the client right away. Microsoft Visio allows you not just to add and design new spaces, but also modify existing spaces. You drag the existing shapes that you already have on the diagram and connect them to each other. For example, instead of designing the house, maybe you realize that you need to design a block in the apartment building. As your client's desires might change, for example, from buying standalone house to buying condominium or renting the apartment. As you go through the design process, you might continue adding more and more items and document and suggest different ideas to your clients. For example, you may propose having just one door to the bathroom, or you might propose to have pass-through bathroom with two doors. You might also propose wall opening in between kitchen and office area. Or if your client doesn't like it, you quickly undo this and put a door in between. A lot of times I'm being asked what are the most practical uses of the floor plan diagrams? In addition to helping you determine square footage and preview the design, you can also create furniture layout for the office, for your home, for the actual floor plan, as well as create a site plan or document how HVAC controls are going to work in this living space or office space by building the HVAC plan, create security and access plan, create plumbing and piping plan, electrical plans and even help people understand how social distancing is going to work in the current living space. The cool thing about Microsoft Visio is that you can keep expanding your floor plan until you get to the right results. For example, you just got an idea that maybe you will benefit from the family room and you keep adding additional walls and additional structures to see how it would impact you. It is possible that once you give it a title, you realize that instead of the window, that we originally put in, which you can delete by using the delete button on the keyboard, you need to add either the door or you may need to add just an opening. And it might be a big opening between living area and family room. 
Microsoft Visio allows you to move the entire diagram once you select it on the page so you can better position it. To do it, you need to switch to the pointer tool, highlight the diagram by dragging and dropping everything, or you can use Control A for selection. And keep in mind, as soon as I select everything, it shows the dimensions as well. So if you need to see the dimensions for the diagram, that is the best way to get to it. And once you have everything selected, you can just drag it to the area on the screen where it should be based on your needs. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills, tips, tricks and techniques we share with you here on online training for everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. Designing and drawing floor plan in Microsoft Visio is very easy, but you need to keep in mind a couple important considerations. You need to determine the area that you're trying to draw. You need to take measurements if this is an existing area. You need to first focus on the walls, interior and exterior, and separate them in your drawings. You also need to keep in mind architectural features for the diagram as well as the furniture and fixtures that you would need to place into your drawing. Typically, when you use Microsoft Visio and you need to replace particular object on the diagram, you select the object and use Change Shape option. Unfortunately, this option is not available when you're drawing floor plan. And if you realize that, for example, you need to change the opening between family room and the living room area into the double door, you need to remove the opening and then replace it with double door. To do that, you can select the object and click the lead button on your keyboard and bring the new object onto the diagram. After you place the object, you can resize it to make it fit the best, based on what you're trying to accomplish. Another way to edit the diagram and reuse some of the things that you've already put together would be to select the items. For example, I can select three walls by holding the shift button on the keyboard and using my mouse. And then I'll use copy and then I'll use paste. Once I have this in place, I can add garage to my structure and adjust the bottom wall to make sure it fits the opening. Once I have it in place, if I need to change the size of the newly added area, I need to select the area and I can do it by using the mouse and dragging over that area and selecting it. Or I can select individual walls by holding the shift button on the keyboard and using the mouse to select and click on the area. And after I've selected all three of the external walls, I can drag it and it will expand the size of the area. In my case, I'm expanding size of the garage. And once I reach to the target area size, I can copy the title by using the copy button on the ribbon and then paste the new title right in the new area and give it the right name. After I have garage in place, I can add garage doors. And my doors might be for two car and then for one car. The difference is that the garage door typically do not open this way. So I might consider show the door as closed because the style of the door opening doesn't match garage door opening style. To do that, I need to select the door and I need to drag the opening to make it closed. And I'll do the same thing for the single car garage opening. Once I have them in place and correctly displayed, I may need to adjust it to make sure they match typical proportions of the cars. And once I'm satisfied with door sizes, I might consider adding additional wall in the diagram to create a separator between the garage and utility area. And once wall is in place, I will add an additional door that will allow me to enter the utility area. I will also add the title for the utility area, so anybody looking at the diagram will be able to quickly identify it. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. So what are the most important considerations when you're looking or considering the floor plan? Obviously, every situation is different, and you should create your own list, but I'll try to share with you my priorities, or something that I always consider. Number one importance for me is versatility and flexibility. When you're doing quality design, you might want to consider making rooms interchangeable. This way, for example, office room can easily be turned into the child's bedroom in the future, for yourself, or maybe for your future buyers. Based on your lifestyle, you might want to consider ideal room layout. Room layout might be different for the families with kids or without kids. 
and some room layouts allow for better entertainment if this is your priority or better play areas if you have kids. In this section, I typically build a list of no-no's. For example, I don't want to have AC unit adjacent to my bedroom because it creates constant noise in the summer. If you're designing your space, make sure you consider this as it is hard to change in the future since most AC units almost permanently connected. Another important consideration for ideal room layout is that bathrooms probably shouldn't face common entertainment spaces like dining rooms or living rooms. And last but not least consideration here is that most people typically like if kitchen opens to the dining room or living room so whoever is cooking can still interact with guests and keep an eye on the kids playing. Size of the room matters as well. When you're designing the room or hallway, you might want to think how many people can be in the space at the same time. Do they have room to move around, especially after you add furniture? And based on the type of furniture that you're adding, would furniture be able to accommodate all the planned activities? Very important considerations is local code and zoning. What are the restrictions? What are the limitations? What are the things that you can do and cannot do? Physical characteristics of the site are also extremely important. Based on the way house is positioned, some rooms might get more exposure to the sun than the others. And you might consider exploiting the exposure to the sun by adding bigger windows to the rooms that are exposed. Ideal floor plan should also fit your lifestyle and priorities. Since a lot of people work remote now due to COVID-19, it is very important to get ideal light and perhaps a quiet location for your home office. If entertainment is important for you, make sure there is a good flow from the kitchen to the outside space and living room area. If you have kids and your kids might be involved in the sports activities and you do a lot of laundry, you might want to consider adding a good flow between the laundry collection area and the washer and dryer machine. And last but not least is balancing between architectural details and practical consideration. In addition to having some of those mandatory requirements met, we also want to consider safety of the kids, maintenance and cleaning of the space, how big heating and cooling bill is going to be, how frequently would everybody have to climb the stairs, and whether floors and ceiling windows are tall enough based on our requirements. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this, and we'll make sure that you get it in the future. To validate how useful particular floor plan is for your needs, you can do a virtual walkthrough in your mind. And as you do a walkthrough, you validate usability of each area. For example, you might park when you come back from work right in your garage. You look around and you realize that garage is missing windows. Maybe this is something that should be added if you're still designing the place. You also might realize that you don't have a way of entering the house from the garage. You would need to go outside of the garage and enter through the front door. You also realize that garage is missing the door out. What if garage gate is no longer works? Maybe there's no electricity. How would you get out from the garage? To fix this, you would need to add the door in the garage as well as door in between garage and family room. Now you run through another scenario in your mind. What if I brought my kids and they have dirty shoes and dirty clothes? Do I want to let them get into the house and right into the family room, do I want to have a space where they can change before entering the house? You realize that maybe you don't need the utility room. Maybe instead you would convert it into the mudroom area. And obviously with the power of tools and floor plan design, you can easily do it right on the diagram. The question you might be asking yourself, do I now need to connect my mudroom into the main living area? You already have a door that connects garage directly with the living area. But maybe that's not the right door. Maybe instead this door should be in between mudroom and the family room. To quickly fix this, you need to cut the door from one area and paste it in another area. And after it's pasted, you just adjust it to make sure it's centered and positioned correctly. As you walk through the space, you realize that maybe mudroom needs a window too. So you can take advantage of the daylight. This would allow you to save on electricity as well family room right now missing the windows and that could be easily fixed by adding a window on both sides. After further considerations and research you realize that maybe you don't like double doors 
It's easy to fix it now, you just need to click the delete button and replace it with just the regular opening. You can expand the opening to make more people be able to go from family room into the living room and from living room into the family room. You might consider doing the same and expanding the opening in between kitchen and the living area. This would allow for the better flow of guests when you entertain people. As you continue looking at the diagram, you realize that the kitchen, office area and bathrooms all miss windows. It is easy to fix right now. All you need to do is to drag windows into those areas to make them brighter and take full advantage of the daylight, as well as save on electricity. When we were just starting our mission, we wanted to pick the name that would best describe our values. And this is the main reason why we picked howtoanalyzedata.net, because the core of our mission is covering questions how and why in every video that we make. Make sure you consider this when you're making your own decision whether to subscribe to the channel or not. Because online training for everyone is one of the few channels that provides you with the real answers. There are a couple cool things Microsoft Visio Floor Plan Template allows you to do to enhance your diagrams. For example, I use callouts very frequently. For example, you can add a callout to highlight something important on the diagram. For example, you might need to add a comment, like need to add hot and cold water as well as gas connection and 220 volt electricity connection to enable washer and dryer. And then you connect the comment to the area where you would like to add this information. Another cool feature of Visio you can use is to show controlling dimensions. There is a special shape for controller dimension right on the diagram. And it allows you to show, for example, room sizes or specific area sizes based on your needs. You can rotate controller dimensions to show different sizes. And it also works very well for the odd shape rooms. If your room is square, you can show room measurements using the room measurement shape. For example, if you need to show size of the office, all you need to do is to drag room measurement shape into the office and then adjust the shape based on the size of the office. And Visio will automatically calculate the size of the office for you after you finalize all of your adjustments. Title room uniquely identifies room measurement shape and stays on the diagram. All you need to do is realign your title for the room itself, for example, office, this way you have office and then room and then the size measurements indicate the entire size of the room and show the dimensions for whoever is interested. And last but not least feature is the one that I like the more. It is automatic space calculation. This feature is especially useful if you're trying to calculate the size of the odd shape rooms. All you need to do to calculate the size for the space is to drag the space shape and drop it in the room. Once you drop it, it calculates the space, but there is more. If you right mouse click and say auto size, it fills in the area and calculates it for the defined area. Since we already have family room title right here on the diagram, we need to remove the space use title in the space shape. To do that, you do a right mouse click on the shape, click set display options and change the space use label into disabled. Once you do it, the office title disappears and all you have is the family room title that you already had, as well as the square footage size for the room. To measure sizes for other rooms, all you need to do is to drag the space object right into the room, choose auto size, and it will calculate the size of the area automatically. I have a question for you. Do you have a better way of solving the challenge that was presented in this video? Could you please share your thoughts in the comment section of this video? Microsoft Visio provides you multiple stencils to help you arrange the furniture. Based on the template that you initially selected to complete your floor plan, you will have access to different stencils. For example, I selected office layout template and I have access to office furniture. But if you would choose home plan, you will have access to home furniture stencils. In the office layout template, you have access to office equipment, office furniture, and the floor plan stencils, which is represented by walls, doors, and windows. Because I have residential floor plan, where we have residential areas, as well as home office, in addition to the office furniture and office equipment, I would need to add furniture for the residential home. To do that, I need to search shapes for the keyword furniture and add furniture stencil into my diagram. After completing this step, I have furniture for just the home office, 
and I also have walls, doors, and windows for the floor plan. There are five important considerations when you're using floor plan to build the furniture layout. Size and shape of the room is extremely important. Typically, you need to measure the room when you're building the floor plan. The key here is to not just know the room sizes, but also document all the built-in furniture pieces that cannot be moved. Another important consideration is to determine the balance line of the room. Typically, to determine the balance of the room, you divide room into the four equal areas. This way, you will be able to arrange visual weight of the furniture on one side of the room to make sure that it is about the same weight of the furniture on the opposite side of the room. It is also very important to consider traffic patterns of how people move within the room. There should be enough clearance area for the person to move within the room, especially in the entertaining areas, where people may go in the opposite directions. For example, in this diagram, some people might be entering the family room, and at the same time, some people might be leaving family room, going to the living room, or even going to the kitchen. Another important consideration is to determine the main feature of the room and build focal point based on the main feature of the room. For example, as person enters the room, what would be the focal point for them to see? Maybe we should add TV unit here so they can see TV playing on, or maybe we can put some of the existing pieces we already have, for example, grand piano. Or if this doesn't work, maybe we can add a fireplace so the person entering the room will just see the fireplace. And last but not least piece here is try and experiment. It is very easy to move shapes on the diagram. Much easier, for example, to just drag grand piano and place it on the diagram in the right spot versus trying to move it in the real life. So what you can do, you can add additional pieces onto the diagram and then get feedback from other people to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up. This tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.